uh, this uh, project on a laser steering device for robot-assisted surgery. So this has sort of spurned some innovation in recent years on the surgical side of things in minimally invasive surgery. So two new surgical methods have emerged. The one on the left, laser microsurgery. So it uses this microscope with a laser coupled to it, and the laser is aiming line of sight down the patient's throat. Here on the right, you see um, using flexible robotics to access the surgical site. So you see multiple robotic arms going through the patient's throat. There are pros and cons of the two approaches. So with the laser microsurgery, we get really nice incisions, but we're limited by that line of sight access constraint. With the flexible robotic surgery, we have this thermal damage, the carbonization, but we have flexible access, so we can access lesions more readily and have better visualization at the surgical site. And so we see this opportunity to bring the strengths of these two surgical approaches together to better resect the lesions and preserve the healthy tissue. And so the opportunity is to bring the laser steering actually onto a flexible robotic device, provide a higher quality incision at the surgical site. The existing approaches we evaluated don't really scale down to the size needed and don't meet the specifications needed in terms of range of motion and bandwidth for the task. And so we propose this new approach. You see our device at the end of a continuum arm. This is the view from the top of the device, and then this is the user input. We're just using a low power pointing laser here, but just to get a sense of the range of motion and the quality of control. And so we use these artificial muscles, piezoelectric bending actuators, driving through these flexible linkages that actually rotate the mirror. So we're converting a linear motion to a rotational motion. And with the two mirrors together, you can scan a 2D plane. And then you can sort of see the image of the laser coming through, hitting our first mirror and then the second mirror, and then the mirrors are obviously orthogonally positioned to generate sort of 2D scanning. So we really care about the range of motion and the, the bandwidth. So the range of motion corresponds to the, the size of lesion and sort of how often the surgeon needs to reorient the device. And so each axis sort of has plus or minus 12 degrees of motion. So at a 20 millimeter standoff, that corresponds to this nice large range of motion. And then we also have quite high bandwidth on the order of 500 hertz, resonant frequencies of 750 and 850 hertz for these two axes. This corresponds to incision quality because the faster that you can cut on tissue, the less carbonization and damage you will incur. Once you've sort of calibrated your device, you can do fancy things like following the trajectories. And maybe more clinically relevant, you can do things like waypoint tracking. So the surgeon could take the device and sort of set waypoints along the margins of a tumor and then come in with a high-powered laser and resect them at a higher speed. So here we're selecting waypoints along this ellipse. And then in the next frame, you'll see we're tracking at a small trajectory, one millimeter square in this case. So we initiated the project looking at ENT as the sort of focus application area for the technology. But the more research we did, uh, particularly with conversations with clinicians and surgeons here in the Boston area, we found that laparoscopy and gastroenterology could be exciting application areas for the technology as well. So this is a really exciting project for us because we're getting to leverage over a decade's worth of engineering experience accrued in microbiotic design and fabrication here in the Wood Lab. And so while we're continuing to develop the microbiotic side of the technology in-house, we're also looking for strategic partners to assist with the translation of the technology out of the lab.